Campbell are gone since Christmas. What way to do? Why? Let him go home in the rain to be sure. Do you hear the rain, Mr. Cole? Mm. I say, do you hear the rain? Do you hear it against the windows? Nonsense. You don't fool me. Do you hear it, I say? Yes. Oh, you do hear it. Well, that's a pretty flood, I think. To last so six weeks and no stirring all the time out of the house. Don't insult me, Mr. Cordell. He returned the umbrella. Anybody would think that you were born yesterday. As if anybody ever did return an umbrella. There! Do you hear it? Worse and worse. Cats and dogs. And for six weeks, always six weeks, and no umbrella. I should like to know how the children are to go to school tomorrow. They can't go through such weather, I'm determined. No, they shall stop at home and never learn anything. The blessed creatures sooner than go and get wet. And when they go up, I wonder who they'll have to thank for knowing nothing. Who indeed but their father. People who can't feel for their children should never be fathers. But I know why you lend the umbrella. Oh yes, I know where to go. I was going out to tea at my dear mother's tomorrow and you knew that. You did it on purpose. Don't tell me you hate me to go there and take every mean chance to stop me. But don't you think it, Mr. Gordon? No, sir. If it comes down in buckets, I'll go all the way. No! I won't have a cab. Where do you think the money's to come from? A cab indeed. So there's back again. Cabs indeed. I'd like to know who's to pay for them. I can't pay for them. And I'm sure you can't. If you go on as you do, throwing away your property, beggaring your chew, and buying umbrellas. But I don't care. I'll go to mother's tomorrow. I've got. And what's more, I'll walk every step of the way. You know that'll give me my debt. Don't call me a foolish woman. It's you that's the foolish man. You know I can't wear clogs, and with no umbrella, the wind's sure to give me a cold. But why do you care for that? Nothing at all. I dare say I shall drum up a doctor's bill. I hope I will. It will teach you to lend your umbrellas again. Ha! And it was only last week I got a new nozzle put to that umbrella. I'm sure if I'd known as much as I do now, it would have gone wrong without for me. Paying for new nozzles for other people to laugh at you. Men indeed, they can't even take care of an umbrella. to be very rich, Mr. Caudill. I wonder who'd lend you five pounds. But so it is, a wife may work and may slave. <laughs> Dear, the many things that might have been done with five pounds, as if people picked up money in the street. But you always were a fool, Mr. Caudill. I've wanted a black satin gown these three years, and that five pounds would have entirely bought it. But it's no matter how I go, not at all. Everybody says I don't dress as becomes your wife. And I don't. But what's that to you, Mr. Bottle? Nothing. Oh, no. You can have fine feelings for everybody but those belonging to you. I wish people knew you as I do. That's all. You like to be called liberal, and your poor family pays for it. All the girls want bonnets. And where they're to come from, I can't tell. Half five pounds would have bought it. But now, they must go without. Of course, they belong to you and anybody but your own flesh and body, Mr. Bottle. Perhaps you don't know that Jack this morning knocked a shuttlecock through his bedroom window. I was going to send to mend it, but after you lent it up five pounds, I'm sure we can't afford it. Oh no. 
In a pretty weather for dear child to sleep with a broken window. He's got a cold already on his lungs. If the dear boy dies, his death will be upon his father's head. We might go and do a good many more things if people didn't throw away their five pounds. Next Tuesday, the fire insurance is due. I should like to know how it's to be paid. Why, it can't be paid at all. That five pounds would have more than done it. And now insurance is out of the question. And there never were so many fires as there are now. I shall never close my eyes all night. But oh, what's that to you? So people can call you liberal, Mr. Cotto? Your wife and children may all be burnt alive in their beds, as all of us to a certainty shall be, for the insurance must drop. Not to be insured for so many years, but how, I should like to know, are people to insure who makes ducks and drakes of their five pounds? Ha! Huh, the suit falling down the chimney. If I hate the smell of anything, it's the smell of suit. And you know that. But what are my feelings to you? Sweep the chimney. Yes, it's all very fine to say sweep the chimney. But how are chimneys to be swept? How are they to be paid for by people who don't take care of their five pounds? Marianne ought to have gone to the dentist tomorrow. She wants three teeth taken out. Now it cannot be done. Three teeth that quite disfigures a child's mouth. Now there, there must stop and spoil the sweetest feast that was ever made. Although she'd been a wife for a lord. Now when she grows up, who'll have her? Nobody. We shall die and leave her alone and unprotected in the world. But what do you care for? Nothing. So you can squander away five pounds. I hope you enjoyed yourself at Greenwich. How do I know that you've been at Greenwich? I know it very well, sir. Know all about it. No more than you think I know. I thought there was something in the wind. Yes, I was sure of it. When you went out of the house today, I knew it by the looks of you. Though I didn't say anything, and you call yourself a respectable man and a father of family? Going to affirm all sorts of people at your time of life? Yes, I never think of taking your wife with you. Oh no, you can go and enjoy yourself out with I don't know who. Go out and make yourself very pleasant. I dare say. Don't tell me. I hear what a nice companion Mr. Cordell is. What a good tempered person. <sighs> I over wish people could see you at home. That's all. But so it is with men. They can keep all of their good temper for out of doors, there was never see any of it. Now, Cordell, I am not in a ill temper. Not at all. I know I used to be a fool when we were first married. I used to worry and fret myself to death when you went out. But I got over that. I wouldn't put myself out of the way of the best man that ever trod. For what thanks does a poor man get? None at all. No, it's those who don't care for their families who are the best thought of. I only wish I could be myself not to care for mine. And why couldn't you say like a man you were going to bring a chair when you went out? It's no use your saying that, Mr. Cordell. Don't tell me that you didn't think of going. You made up your mind to it and you know it. And I, of course, I never want to go out. Oh no, I must stay at home with the cat. You couldn't think of taking your wife and children like any other decent man to a fair? Oh no. You never care to be seen with us. I'm sure many people don't know you are married at all. How can they? Your wife's never seen with you. Greenwich, indeed. 
You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Mr. Cornell. I mean, a few words would have been what I've been to you. I always wish my time was to come over again. That's all. And I wouldn't be the fool I've been. Going to a fair? And I suppose you had your fortune told by the gypsies? You needn't have wasted your money. I'm sure I can tell you your fortune if you go on as you do. Yes, the jail will be your fortune. And it will be no matter, none at all, if your wife and children didn't suffer with you. And what is most mean, most selfish of you, Cordell, you can go and enjoy yourself out and never so much as bring home for the poor children a gingerbread nut. Don't tell me that your pocket was picked of a pound of nuts. Nice company you must have been to have your pocket picked. Going to a fair indeed at your age. Thank you. 